my name is Arisma and welcome to our channel. If you're new here, make sure to check out our channel because we post weekly videos to help you get into medical school and to ace your med school applications. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the quantitative reasoning section of the UCAT exam. The quantitative reasoning section assesses your ability to solve problems when you're given numerical data sets. However, since you're given a calculator in the UCAT exam, it focuses more on your ability to solve problems rather than to deal with numbers. In this section, you're presented with 36 questions and you have 25 minutes to complete them. In today's video, we're going to be presenting you with eight top tips to help you ace the quantitative reasoning section. So without further ado, let's get to our first tip. So our first tip today is to read the question carefully and to extract only the relevant information. If you've practiced some UCAT quantitative reasoning questions before, you would have noticed that some of the questions are notoriously long and have way too much unnecessary information. It might be useful to read the final question first and to then extract the relevant information from the paragraph and the context that they've given. Our second tip is to not forget units and conversions. Make sure your final answer is in the same unit as the unit in which you did all of your calculations. Some important conversions to remember are miles to kilometers, pounds to kilograms, and pounds to grams, and centimeters to inches. Our third tip is to use the drawing board and the calculator. So the online calculator that the UCAT exam provides you with is quite a basic one and it can be hard to use if it's the first time that you're using it. So we would recommend to use that exact same UCAT calculator when you're practicing for the exam so you become more familiar with what the calculator can and cannot do and to also learn some shortcuts including the memory functions of the calculator um, just so you can save that extra bit of time. Also, make sure to use the drawing board to write down some important calculations or numbers that you think might come up later in the exam again. You can also use the whiteboard to write down any conversions if you're scared that you may forget it later down in the exam. Our fourth tip is to practice your mental math. After one year of A-level maths, you're probably very reliant on your calculator. And as we've mentioned before, the UCAT calculator is very basic, doesn't do much, and is very slow and hard to use. So if you practice your mental math, and if you train yourself to be good at mental math before the exam, you will save a lot of time that will be very, very useful in this section. Because as I mentioned before, using the UCAT calculator takes a lot of time. So try your best to improve your mental math to save time in this section. Our fifth tip is that rounding off is your best friend. So often the UCAT will give you questions where there are lots of decimal points in questions and they're just really really big numbers that are very hard to input into the calculator and just make your life more tough. So look at the answer choices and if they're really far apart rounding off the values may be useful because you'll get an estimate of what the answer should be and then you can choose the answer choice that is closest to your estimated answer that you get. This will save you a lot of time because if you're dealing with whole numbers and not decimals you can also do that mentally and you'll save lots of time because you won't be using the UCAT calculator. Our sixth tip is to learn important math formulae so these include finding the areas of particular shapes and volumes of 3D objects also speed equals distance into time um, and the formula for acceleration as well these are just some key formulae that we think you should definitely know and learn for your UCAT exam. So our final tip would be to recap certain GCSE math topics that may crop up on your UCAT quantitative reasoning section. So some of these topics would include area, perimeter and volume, extracting information from complex graphs or tables, speed, distance, time, fractions, decimals, mean, median, mode and so on. These are topics that are commonly found both in GCSE math as well as UCAT quantitative reasoning section. So it may be useful to spend some time just going over your GCSE math textbook and recapping these topics really quick. So that brings us to the end of today's video. We hope you found today's video useful, but if you have any more questions on the quantitative reasoning section or on the UCAT exam, feel free to leave them down in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. See you in the next one. Mm -hmm.